Hello and welcome to another edition of the South Carolina Business Review. This is Mike Switzer. The stress the global pandemic has put on the business community has added new dimensions to the science of cost controls. How does one manage costs when everything is broken? Mark Cicchini is chair of the School of Accounting at the Darlamore School of Business at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. This is part two in our weekly series entitled Managerial Insights Supporting Businesses During an Uncertain Time, which will be followed up with a live Zoom conference this coming Monday, May the 4th at 3 p.m. with Mark. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Mike. I imagine that, you know, as a chair of an accounting department at a major university, you're out there talking to the business community. How are they faring during this time of uncertainty? It's interesting because it's not hitting every company the same. You know, a lot of companies basically are kind of down. Sales are down. Transactions are down. Some companies are really kind of ground to a halt completely. And then there's a kind of a few companies that are business as usual, like ones that are, you know, in essential businesses. And then there's a few types of companies and industries that are actually doing better, like Zoom or um, Grubhub or something like that. Whether they're doing well or not, they have to all be paying pretty close attention now to the numbers, their bookkeeping. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Especially cash. When you have sort of a bunker mentality, the first thing you think of is holding on to your cash. Is this the preferred strategy to keep the lights on, to hoard the cash? It seems like, and at least we're seeing this with some of the larger companies, so a lot of times larger companies with um, really solid credit lines don't actually keep too much cash around because they can get to that cash easily and and at low interest rates. But now even companies like that are starting to have bigger rainy day funds and keep a little bit more cash around. And they are being assisted by the federal government with some of these costs. Yeah, the government has, has kind of come up pretty strong. A lot of it is built around the idea of keeping employees at work when companies might not have the money ordinarily to pay them. Well, let's go into a little bit more detail then on some of these programs and how they are actually working to help the business community. Okay, yeah. So one program offers employers to not have to pay the employer portion of payroll taxes. So there's two sides of payroll taxes, the ones that the employees put in, and then the employers have to match that. What they're doing is saying you can actually wait two years to pay those, which actually allows you to keep that cash and then kind of keep your business going. Another program is actually for companies that have been hit especially hard, like in the restaurant industry, for instance, the government's willing to pay 50% of your payroll costs, as long as you just keep your employees because they want people to kind of stay put since since the hope is, is that this is going to be uh, temporary. And then there's kind of one really interesting one. There's a loan program out there capped at 4% interest, and you can use it for payroll, rents, utilities, mortgages. And what's really interesting about this is it's a forgivable loan, which means that if it turns out that you actually needed this and, the, and you could prove to the government that you actually needed this, that the loan actually, you will never have to pay that loan back. You'll just have to pay the interest on that loan. How are companies who have so many employees whose compensation can be completely or partially incentive-based, how are companies handling that these days? Yeah, that's a good question. It's not easy because incentive programs tend to be usually based on numbers. And of course, across the board, almost every company is down somewhere. And so it's really difficult to hold employees accountable to those numbers. So I guess the idea is is for companies, they have to either drastically change their expectations for those incentives or go to something more subjective, like who's putting in effort, who's kind of better team players and those kind of things that, that companies don't usually like to use. Well, Mark, we're almost out of time. Any final tips for financial management for our listeners? So I do think, okay, so you're stuck in this situation and you can be staring at the COVID maps and hoping things go down quickly or you can actually do something. So if your business is on pause, maybe this is a chance to actually kind of look at your business processes and analyze some things to improve efficiencies. You could also be looking at measures. A lot of uh, companies have difficulty finding the right metrics, and so that maybe then in a couple of months, if things can get back up and running, you'll actually be better off. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time today. We will see you Monday afternoon. Thank you very much, Mike. Mark Cicchini is chair of the School of Accounting at the Darlamore School of Business at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. This is part two in our weekly series entitled Managerial Insights Supporting Businesses During an Uncertain Time. It's a partnership 
that this radio show is doing in conjunction with the Darlamore School. And we will be following up this conversation in more detail with Q&A from participants at a live Zoom conference this coming Monday, May the 4th. You will find a link to all of the details posted at our webpage, South Carolina Public Radio. Org, where you can also hear this show again and subscribe to this podcast. With the South Carolina Business Review, this is Mike Switzer. The views expressed on the South Carolina Business Review do not necessarily reflect those of South Carolina Public Radio.